All right, there we go. Uh, so I'm sitting down with Mason Hutchison. So for those of you who don't know Mason, he is the founder of Herb Rally, uh, a podcast and platform connecting people with events and education uh, from all walks of life. And thanks to the power of the internet uh, from anywhere across the globe, I'm here in Canada. Of course, Mason's in the in the US. Um, and if you haven't had the chance to check out his work yet, I, I'd highly recommend it. I'm such a huge fan of the podcast already. And since connecting with you directly, I've gone on to obviously explore the platform now as well. And it just is such a great collaborative wealth of knowledge. And, and you know, I've only probably touched the tip of the iceberg so far. So there's so much more to explore. Um, and I know previous to this, you worked for, for Mountain Rose for 11 years, uh, completed two herbal apprenticeships and co-organized one of the longest standing events in the U.S., which is all fantastic. And of course, the list goes on. I know you're you're also a father and a husband and, you know, we have we have many titles we give ourselves. But um, <laughs> needless to say, you've been uh, such an active member within the herbal community and and continue to hold space for so many others to do the same, which I, I commend you for. And I'm one of those, the one of those community members. Um, but I'm so curious, and we got talking a little bit last time, but what first brought you to herbal medicine? And, and where did this journey begin for you? Feel free to not spare any details. I'm, I'm familiar. <laughs> um, thank you for that intro. That was really, it's really cool to hear other people describe it, because sometimes you find yourself like, I don't know, you're just kind of in it. And you're like, I'm just doing what I do because I love it. But um, yeah, I guess it is significant for other people. And uh, it, it always brings me so much joy to know that other people are getting value out of what we're producing here at Herb Rally. So um, thanks. Uh, as far as what brought me to herbalism, uh, uh, I don't remember what I told you in our last conversation, but uh, this may be, you know, different than what you were expecting. But I would say nutrition by way of, and I don't want to say this term like lightly, depression. Uh, I had a um, really just strong, I'd say like sadness uh, early on. And I remember, I remember learning what you consume, what you put in your body actually has an effect on your mood. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure it's so obvious to so many people, but I didn't really realize that as a late teen, you know, early twenties. And so I, I started becoming much more conscious about what I put in, into my body. I developed a really strong uh, passion for nutrition, um, uh, fitness and all that stuff. And uh, over time, I, I learned about, you know, the healing uses of herbs, uh, especially like your Chinese tonic herbs, adaptogens and all that. Um, and so that was kind of my gateway into, into herbalism was via nutrition. That's so cool. I love to hear that. And I think that's such a great point to, you know, jump off of, cause I, I totally believe that. And I've, you know, of course it took me also a period of time to get there too, but realizing that we are what we eat at the end of the day. And so much of what we put into our bodies, well, everything that we put into our bodies affects the way we think, the way we behave and the way we are exist in this world, you know? And uh, I think it's, it's funny if we can go back to a place of living with that at the forefront of, of everything we put in our body. I think that's such a powerful way to, or place to exist from. And, you know, it just, it, it puts the, the responsibility in our hands, which of course is a bit of an endeavor, but at the same time, it gives us the power and the tools to, to take with life what you will, you know? Um, so I think that's, that's such a really cool thing. And, uh, and it's cool to hear that that's kind of where, what brought you to, to herbal medicine. So with that, from speaking of uh, ideas and, and fruition, can you tell, tell us what that journey looked like from idea to fruition for Herb Rally? Yeah. So as you mentioned in my intro, uh, I worked for Mountain Rose Herbs. I was uh, essentially in the marketing department, but I was helping mostly with events for, for most of my time there. And uh, um, uh, so, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, I was like, oh, wouldn't that be cool if there was a website that listed all of the herbalism events? I know lots of other communities have event boards online. And uh, I found bits and pieces here and there, like you know, announcing all the major herb conferences and stuff like that. But there wasn't something that I could search for uh, that listed all the herb walks and um, just little mm -hmm. plant talks and, in, in, you know, the smaller cities and stuff like that. Um, so I just decided I was going to, to be the one to make this uh, website. And so what happened was, um, <clears throat> well, first, it's like idea generation for the name. And I sat on that forever. Uh, and <laughs> 
originally I was like, oh, herbalismevents.com. And I was like, that's so boring. So, <laughs> so I had like a list of ideas and I, and I sent it out to my friends and family. I was like, what do you think is a good name? Herb Rally was my favorite and Herb Rally was one of them. And uh, sure enough, I just went with that, you know. Um, uh, but again, I, I bought the domain herbrally.com and I just sat on it for probably a year uh, because I kept having this like, perfectionism in my head I kept thinking how am I going to make this perfect right from the get and then it just dawned on me I should probably just start <laughs> and then improve yeah. it over time uh so what I did was I it was so simple and I know there's websites you could go to to look at early versions of websites and it's um uh they say if you're not embarrassed by your first you know stint then you started too late uh, right. So it's, I'm, I'm happy to say I'm embarrassed by the first iteration of Herb Rally, <laughs> but essentially all it was, was a list of events. And I, and I knew about these events because I subscribed to tons of uh, herbal newsletters and, uh, and I was just so immersed in that uh, scene. So, uh, so yeah, it really just started by listing events. <laughs> that is so cool. And you know what the cool thing about that too, I, it just makes me think of a personal experience that I have that's very similar that kind of got me to the herbal practice in general. I mean, I, I think it started, you know, it's, I think it starts off when we're kids, you know, playing around the sandbox, you know, I truly think it begins right from, you know, basically inception, but, um, but later on in life anyways, once you go through the period of figuring out yourself and, and finding your way and as we're continuing to do I guess for the rest of our lives but um, I remember being a part of this uh, like this personal growth Facebook group at the time and this goes back more than a decade ago and it was uh, a herbalist doing a plant walk and I just thought well that sounds cool you know and and so it, it really it, it really speaks to the need and and sometimes people don't know what they're interested in until they try it and you know I did that and instantly fell in love so you know for all the people that are finding their very first events and stuff like that all through Herb Rally I think it's so cool that you have this place and space that exists for people to, to find different opportunities that are in their area. And, and how far spread does it go? Like, do you list events? Is it just within the States? I can't remember if it, I'd seen more than um, the States or is it more so central to, to the U S or. Yeah. So I'd say 95% of the events are listed are in the United States. However, I do have an international events page, uh, herbrally.com slash international. No slash events slash international. Uh, and there's probably 10 events happening there right now. Um, I always welcome people to submit international events to me. Um, I want to make that site, that part more robust, but uh, yeah, uh, we also list in the, in the age of COVID, we also list virtual events, which we never did before. We listed virtual schools, but now we actually list virtual events because there's so many of them. Um, so yeah, virtual international and United States. Amazing. Well, and I get, that's the beautiful thing about, you know, as much as face-to-face -face connection is, is something that you can't quite pin against an, a virtual event. I think it's great that so many people can come together and, uh, and attend virtual events that they might not be able to get to if it was just an in-person gathering. So I think that's, that's really awesome. I haven't seen the international side, so I'll definitely have to check that out after we chat, but, um, but that's amazing. So I think uh, you're definitely filling a void for, for the event niche. I think that's amazing. And I know I'm, I'm so curious about this personally, because so many of us are in this place of, you know, and I don't know if you experienced this. I know when we first talked, you had made it your goal to get a rally going within 10 years. I think, I think you mentioned 10 years. That was your, that was your time frame. And to me, honestly, that was so inspiring. Cause I'm like, I'm that person that always wants to, you know, I have an idea and I'm like, I want it now. I want to do all the things now. Just, you know, that's the way I am. And I just, you know, I, it's the excitement, you know, gets to me, but, uh, but so yeah, that was inspiring for me. The fact that you set a time frame that, you know, and I think it, you said seven years it took you. So, I mean, that's a, a good, a good parameter of time, but how did that, can you talk a little bit about your transition from how that went to being the side hustle to your full-time gig? I know that is a, a large undertaking for so many people. And I know there's a lot of people, especially being able to just be more flexible with our lives now, given the state of everything. And people are, I think, exploring that a little more now, which is, which is really awesome to see that people aren't subject to just working a job that maybe keeps them comfortable because life has been so uncomfortable, you know, which um, it's kind of pushed people in a place where they can actually go after things that they're really passionate about. And um, so I'm so curious to know what that looked like for you, because I think so many of us are probably in similar boats and, and you're quite an inspiration for that transition. So if you could speak to that a little bit, I, uh, I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, I, I, the first thing I thought of was, um, 
you said you're wired that way to kind of want the, well, I think you said this instant gratification or, or something to that effect, yeah. but, uh, but uh, um, I think we all kind of are, and it's kind of unnatural to want to be patient with something. So I'd say like the first hack you could do is do set some sort of long-term goal. So nothing feels rushed. You don't, you don't feel um, like you need to make bad choices, like to make a quick buck or whatever. Like um, I, I think setting a 10 year goal is a, a 10 year goal is wise because then it, it allows you to play the patient game and just make slow incremental um, moves. Uh, I would say <clears throat> I have to give a lot of credit uh to how I was able to, you know, jump from a, a, a you know, full-time job or whatever to Herb Rally as a full-time thing uh, through frugality. Uh, yeah. And I think we, we might talk about the art of frugal nutrition later, but um, um, yeah. regardless, uh, I've always had this innate passion for not spending money. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> I really know either. why or where that comes from, but I, I vividly remember um, as a kid, I would, I would, I would just like try to save my money. Um, I, I would see my brother spend their money like immediately on dumb stuff. <laughs> 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 but um, I really think it's smart to, um, from a personal finance standpoint, to start tracking your money, uh, seeing where you're, you're uh, unnecessarily spending, start saving that money, building a buffer. So you're allowed to, you're allowing yourself to essentially jump ship later on. Um so yeah, I guess the first two things that come to mind are frugality, watching your money, um, and setting a long-term goal. Um, I don't know. Uh, where do you want to go with that? Um, I I guess, you know, I guess I was just curious in, in what made you set the 10 years and, and how do you found, how did you find that worked and what would you change if you could go back and could, would you change your timeline or, or were you happy with your, your goals that you set for yourself and the timeline it ended up being? Yeah. I mean, so when I started, which yeah, I think was about seven years ago. So that would put me at about 30 years old. Um, I think that was the perfect amount of time. I, I really do. I think um, a decade is, is a solid foundation for trying to create something of substance, you know, right. and even before that, you know, before I started Herb Rally, as you mentioned, I was doing apprenticeships. Um, and, and also before that, I'm, I'm working in a peripheral field, or actually it's very directly related. You know, I was doing events for Mountain Rose Herb. So I was yeah. just immersing myself fully in the community, building connections, um, uh, working on my own, like um, business savvy and marketing and stuff like that. And um, also learning herbalism the whole time and building connections and all that. So um, yeah, it all kind of played together. That makes sense. And yeah. do you think if you're, if you didn't, and I, I'm, I'm going to assume here that you enjoyed your job, given that it was so related to what you're doing now, if you didn't like your job as much, like if it was, you know, if you were doing that nine to five crunch, do you think you would have <laughs> lessened that time frame, or do you think you would have still kept it a year? <laughs> Oof, that's a great question. Yeah, a hard question, but. Um, yeah, that definitely plays a factor. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I feel very blessed and very lucky to have a job for so long that I really, really loved doing. So yeah, that's, that's hard to say. It's I know it just makes me think. And it's so true. <laughs> I think that things do take time. You know, it's nothing happens overnight. And I, you know, I think we all want things to happen too fast. I know I'm the prime example and I, I constantly have to check in and, you know, slow myself down because you know, there's just so many experiences in the world. And I guess I just want to jump on all of them right now. But um, <laughs> so it's good to be slow. And I, I know that that time frame will be unique to everyone's situation and how long they they want to have the have the gestation period happen for, I guess. But um, but that's cool. I, uh, I appreciate you explaining that to us a little bit. Um, yeah. And how was your time at Mountain Rose Herbs? You it sounds like you really enjoyed working there. Yeah, I mean, so I was in customer service for about the first 11 months, and then I immediately got thrust into the marketing department where I was uh, managing all the events. Uh, right on. How that happened was, uh, did you ever hear of the event called Rootstock? I, yes, I have, actually. Yeah. So Rootstock, I, I give all my credit to, to the event Rootstock that Mountain Rose Herbs hosted. Um, 
because I was able to really uh, show everyone my passion for the community. Uh, and I think in that like six day span, I put in like 90 hours um, at the event. Um, and uh, so, yeah, from there, from then on out, I was basically going to events and uh, herb conferences, natural food shows and that kind of thing. And that was my favorite part about the job, to be honest. And then, of course, COVID hit and uh, it kind of perfectly timed with me wanting to pursue herb rally full time uh, that it was just the perfect time to jump and, and give it a go. Would that have been around the same time as like everything kind of hit the fan? Would that have been the same time that you would have left Mountain Rose? Yeah, I left Mountain Rose five months ago. Okay, right yeah, on. Or September, whenever that was, yeah. And we're still pretty in it. So yeah, that makes sense. It's funny, again, as I was saying before, like this pandemic has put so many people in, you know, I guess there's, at the end of the day, all I'm, all I'm trying to say is there's many silver linings that have come from all this, you know, like it's, it really has changed people's lives for the worse and the better, of course, but um, I, I, it's inspiration to hear how it, how it ended up panning out on your end. So I think that's really crazy. Um, and since the beginning of Herb Rally, has it changed over the years or has the goal, like, I know it started as events and now it's, it, you know, from this perspective, it's leaning to, towards having that, of course, as well, the education piece, um, uh, or sorry, having the events piece now, and then now transitioning to having more education offerings and stuff as well. Yeah, actually, Uh, as you were talking about the silver linings of the whole COVID experience, uh, I happened to get married and quit my job like in the same week. So, um, so (laughs) yeah, it was really, so Amanda was the photographer and one of the creative people at Mountain Reserves and she worked there for four years and, uh, um, you know, (laughs) not to give the full story, but no, long story short, uh, (laughs) what's that? No, please. The full story. I'm all for story. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll give you the Cliff's notes. But um, basically, <laughs> we worked together for like three years. I was madly in love with her the entire time. And I was in marketing. And she was in creative. Uh, and then one day, about a year and some change ago, I decided to tell her my feelings, which was awkward because, you know, <laughs> you work together 40 hours a week very closely. And I was just thinking, you know, what if she doesn't feel the same way? Sure enough, she felt the same way. Um and uh yeah we both quit mountain reserves essentially at the same time we got married we decided to go full-time on herb rally and this kind of gets into your question what has changed well she's now co-owner um she's also handles all of the design so herb rally is way prettier now than it used to be (laughs) Uh, (laughs) as opposed to my copy and paste jobs you know thank you Um, amanda (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah so um the question was, how has it evolved and changed or where we're going yeah. or, yeah. yeah. Um, oh my goodness. So she's a phenomenal photographer and uh, we just were up in Portland and we, we hung out with a couple of herbalists, Paul Bergner and Dr. Orner Isaacson. And uh, she, we we're going to take, you know, we're going to take these photos of these herbalists every time we, we visit with some. And uh, uh, she just took these epic pictures of those two. And now our, our plan is to create like a beautiful coffee table book with like, you know, the image on one side and like a quote or like a, you know, a saying on the other side by that particular herbalist. And uh, oh, I love that. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it because it, it like the pictures are so good. And I'm just, I don't know when this is going to happen, but now it's a project that we're going, that we're working on. And that would have never happened if it weren't for Amanda. So, um, so we're just gonna, that's the, that's my favorite part about working on Herb Rally is we get an idea and we just kind of go for it. Um, but the, this book thing is super exciting. Uh, there's other things too, but I'm rambling now. So, oh, that's okay. I'm a, a known rambler myself. So <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like an awesome book though. I'll be, uh, I'll be happy to pre-order that one for my coffee table. So count me in. That's exciting. Well, and that's the fun thing too. So it sounds like before Amanda, was it, was it you doing everything? Were you the master behind it all? I obviously there's, there's so many voices that are on the podcast, but I mean the, the behind the scenes stuff, was that all you? Behind the scenes stuff, uh, I would say mostly yes, but also I'll, I'll give a shout out to um, Sarah Hazard. She she helped at least for two or three years, um, kind of doing admin stuff and stuff like that. And then my sister in law actually helped for about six or seven oh, months okay. once too. But yeah, other than that, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I, I'd say you did a fantastic job and I love seeing how it has, has changed over time now that obviously Amanda's on board now too, and everything looks great. So for those of you who haven't checked it out yet, definitely hop on over to herbrally.com. It's amazing. Um, nice. And it, it's cool too, right? Like I, I feel like the, the ideas will come as soon as probably you've closed a chapter of something else. I don't know if you've you found that, but I know uh, you just launched your your newest endeavor, as far as I know. It's the Herb Rally Schoolhouse. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah. Um, so early on, a lot of my inspiration for as far as herbal content comes from, uh, do you know, John Gallagher and like Herb Mentor, Learning Herbs? Yeah. yeah. So Learning Herbs has a, a, a membership site too, uh, herbmentor.com. Um, but I was just thinking, you know, this was like a thought early on, like a little seed. Um, I was thinking, you know, it'd be cool to have a membership site someday. Um, of course, now we're talking about transacting with Herb Rally audience, whereas before Herb Rally's main, I had a paycheck before where um, from Mount Rose Herb, so I was able to just give, 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 and just try to, you know, promote other people as much as possible. And so there was this side of me where I'm like, do I really want to charge money for content? And, you know, I, we came up with a, a price that I thought was fair. It's like 10, 10 bucks a month. Um, but, you know, to give another, another way to look at it for me is now Amanda and I are, our hope is to produce higher quality content where we're actually able to go to the herbalist um, and record, you know, uh, full length courses with them, uh, shorter videos with them, et cetera. And it essentially it's kind of a way of funding my larger dreams for Herb Rally. AKA traveling the country, meeting up with all these herbalists that I already have relationships with, and then just producing this awesome, beautiful content. So, so our, yeah. So basically our plan is release a new video or something every week, whether that's written audio or video. Um, and yeah, just each week build on it right now. I think there's three videos live, so it's super small right now, but in typical herb rally fashion over the course of time, you know, it's <laughs> going to be giant and, uh, uh, that, that's that's the plan that's the idea behind it that's exciting though and I think that's the the uh, something that is so invaluable right like the as far as I, I understand what you mean absolutely because I I was at that place in my life too where I was very frugal and I still am in so many ways but um, so we want to be able to obviously appeal to those people too I'm sure that's that's the the goal right is to appeal to as large of an audience as possible but at the same time if it if it helps you get to more places to get more content and more you know, offerings for people. I think, I mean, all the power to that, right? I think that's just an amazing thing. And I think that's what makes Herb Rally so invaluable is that it's, you know, a lot of times you go to sites and it's, it's one voice, which I think all those voices are absolutely amazing, but it's so amazing to hear different perspective and just have a different reference point. And, you know, your monographs are a great example of that. And I think those are fantastic. I know I mentioned that last time we talked and, and how, uh, how great I think they are. Um, but I just, yeah, I just love how, how many walks of life get brought into the mix and everyone has a different experience with, especially when we're talking about herbs, herbs in particular, you know, the same herb will be so different for one person as it is for the other. So I think experience is that way. Um, herbs are that way. And I think, I think what you're doing is fantastic. And, and I'm so excited to see the videos that you're, you're going to end up putting together. I saw the three on there. So I'm excited to see more as they, as they keep coming up. Um, so I know that was, so you just recently launched that one, but I, I missed the launch point of the art of frugal nutrition. How long has that been ongoing now? Cause that's See, another one of your offerings too. Yeah. We offered that on, it was a palindrome. I think, I think it was 12, 22, 21 or something like that. So oh, cool. December, uh, yeah. So we launched right. in December with three modules and, quarterly we're going to be releasing new modules each time so we have currently we have dumpster diving uh fermentation and bone broth and then next month uh we're releasing the spice apothecary with bev and claire and then paul bergner was why we were up in portland he recorded a um a module with us as well so and then i'm going to be doing a nourishing herbal infusions one and uh yeah so that'll just be keep kept adding to as well that's cool. I love the style of them, how they're both limitless in that you'll just keep obviously putting more content in as the content comes, which is, is really, really cool. And uh, I know we've talked about frugality a little bit. Can you tell <laughs> us what your, why you wanted to start this course and, and what brought you to, 
making the art of uh, frugal nutrition course, because this definitely speaks to me just when you were saying before, you know, like you'd kind of penny pinch your money. I I'd do the same, you know, and, and thinking about it now, I, I spend so differently when it comes to food in particular, but I remember there were times where I would just you know, go into the grocery store and it was like, okay, how little can I spend today to, you know, feed myself for a week, you know, and, and, you know, I was saving money for, I don't even know what I would do with it. I, you know, eventually it was used for, you know, certain things, but, but along the way, I was always so cautious of how that money went. And in a way, and, you know, we can get into this too, but it's, it's somewhat become a limiting belief in my world just because I've always, you know, figured I can do with only so much. And I was always so proud of that. Right. But at the same time, I think it can definitely be a bit of a hindrance too. But um, anyways, now, now I'm rambling, but um, yeah. Can you tell us about the, the course and, and how you got to the point of wanting to create a course like this? Yeah. So it combines two of my passions, right? Nutrition yeah. and frugality. And, um, this is another one of those ideas that has been in my head forever. Uh, and it was, it was another one of those perfectionism things where I'm like, this is going to be a book. It's going to be a perfect <laughs> book. It's going to be the be all end all perfect book on how to combine frugality and nutrition. I'm going to write the whole thing. Uh, and I just sat on it forever. I have like a giant list of notes on all the things, all the different chapters and so on. And, um, and then it occurred to me, I was like, oh, right, the internet. Um, oh, right, <laughs> what I'm already doing with Herb Rally. And, um, and then I also, I, I, I don't really look at myself as a teacher or anything like that. And maybe that's a limiting belief or whatever, but um, uh, I'm trying to work on that. But um, besides that, I have such access to such amazing um, herbalists and nutritionists and all that. Um, I was just like, oh, I should just turn this into a course. Um, so that was kind of the idea behind that. Uh, yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> cool. So it sounds like you have the notes and was it, was it in a way that you, you had the notes and the ideas and you found the people to suit those niches that you, that you came up to, or were, were people bringing things to the table that you already had known them to be good for? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, I had these ideas and I'm like, I know exactly who would be perfect for that. Ah, so there's good. nobody else I'd rather have teach on dumpster diving than just set right. this for it. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. And that's a, that's a pretty cool niche to be in. That's cool. <laughs> and I know you offer it. Uh, so it's, a, it's a membership, but it's also, a, there's a sliding scale offering in there too. I think I saw. Yeah, I guess, I guess you could call it a membership. We're just, call, we're just kind of calling it a course. Uh, but it is a membership in a way where it's like, well, once you register, we are going to keep adding to it. Uh, yeah, and we, we did the whole sliding scale option. Um, kind of as a, we were going to offer it for free regardless, but it was kind of a way to offer it to people who want to kind of give to the project. Um, so there's four different options, pricing options, including free. So Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I think that's so amazing because I think a lot of the times the hiccup is maybe not being able to afford these things that we want to learn about. And I think just having access to free content or a pay what you can sort of way of getting there, I think is a really, a really great way to make it accessible to as many people as possible. And I think especially just given the the topic itself, right? Like that's such a, a topic that makes sense to, to have this offering. Um, and so, okay, so I'm going into it. I haven't obviously signed up for the course yet, but I'm jumping into it. And it's the content is, is video based and I'm sure there's printouts and stuff like that that kind of go along with it. Is that just to know what to expect for people that are thinking about maybe wanting to, to jump in? Yeah, so they're all video lessons and then there's accompanying PDFs. Um, and then we also uh, provide downloadable audio if, if they want to listen to it instead. Oh, that's so cool. I love and then that. we also... Um, as you mentioned, I just want to touch on this. Yeah, it seemed totally anti antithetical to charge money for this course that's trying to help, you know, provide information on how to save money on food. But, but then we also turn it into a, uh, like a community, aka it's just a Facebook group. Um, I know a lot of people probably don't like Facebook, but that's the best we could do um, for now. And then, um, and then we also thought, one day I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we donated some of the profits to a nonprofit helping, you know, support hunger? Oh, okay. uh, so, so we're, we're, we're doing that as well. But. Oh, I love that. I think that's so amazing. I, um, oh, I just, that's so inspiring to hear all of what you're doing. And I think that's going to resonate with so many people and, you know, it makes me want to jump on the course and, and dive into, to see more. Cause I'm in the same boat of, of, 
you know, being so frugal. And now in all fairness, now I probably, probably mo- the majority of my money just goes to good quality food. Cause I do believe, like we were saying, we are what we eat and, and good quality food is so impactful. Um, and, you know, coming from the standpoint now where it, it, it's a bit, of, it could be tough, you know, like getting, getting your hands on good quality food. Sometimes it does have to cost us more, but so I'm curious to also explore what that looks like and how it could cost less, but still achieving the same results. So I'll definitely have to uh, hop on and, and check out more about that. I think that's, that's awesome. Um, and uh, so obviously your team is continuing to grow. Where do you, do you have, is there a new tenure now or are you kind of more so being as though you're in the space of it going with maybe the flow of things and, and, you know, as an idea comes then exploring what that looks like, or do you have a, a long-term plan now since, you know, we're all talking about long-term goals? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a big believer in creating a vision for yourself and, and working towards that. Uh, and I've met with Amanda a f- numerous times recently to try to really come out, come up with a, another, you know, outlandish goal, uh, for our family and our business and all that. Um, and I think we've kind of come to it. Uh, it's it's really just being able to support our family and our vision of how we want our lifestyle to be um, while continuing continuing to expand on Herb Rally. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how specific I, I should get, but um, yeah, it's just uh, we're we're taking steps to kind of work towards that vision. Um, I used to, I used to think that, oh, I want Herb Rally to be the biggest site possible. Um, but I just, I'm, I'm super happy with the growth and the progress and, and what we're, did you happen to see the, um, the three hour podcast episode with Jim McDonald? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. So I, I only bring this up because I'm, I'm just like, so happy with Herb Rally because it's able to provide this type of content to the audience. Like this, this podcast episode is so good. And I just know it probably wouldn't exist if Herb Rally wasn't around. And this is the type of stuff that I would just love if I were like on the other end, you know, consuming this type of content. So um, yeah, we're just nothing. (laughs) Yeah. What's our specific tenure goal? I don't. (laughs) And if you don't have one, no pressure. I was just curious since I know, uh, I know planning ahead is, has been a big part of bring herb rally into existence. So I wondered if there was, if there was a big chapter happening next or if it was more so just kind of going with ideas as they come. Yeah, that's basically it. And just keep, cool. keep working on it, keep improving it. And yeah, it's, it's, it's my passion. I, I suspect it will be forever. Um, yeah. So it's just fun to work on every day. I love that. And yeah. as far as I know, you mentioned obviously Amanda and you have, I, I, you have one kid, is that right? Yeah. A and what is their name? What's that? Amelia. Amelia. Awesome. So, and you mentioned, you touched on that. So you want to obviously withstand the life that, that is something that suits obviously you and the family. What does that look like? What is a, what does a life look like for you? That would be, you know, getting up and being excited to work every day. And, and yeah, what does that look like? I know that looks so different to so many people. So I'm curious to, to know what that looks like. I mean, my dream is I'm a, I grew up in the Northwest, uh, Oregon. I love it here. My dream is to live here uh, half the year, preferably probably from April to October, something like that. For understandable reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with um, my birthday is on October 19th. So I figure I could, we could leave October 20th and yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I have this, um, cliche vision of having, you know, like the Airstream and, um, just traveling from, uh, from, you know, what would that be November to March or whatever, uh, yeah. and just, recording lots of different content with different herbalists with our we're getting a puppy and uh oh exciting in, in july yeah. and um and just travel around with our dog and um amelia mm-hmm. and amanda and yeah just record a bunch of cool content and then come back home for the spring and summer oh that's awesome <laughs> now when you say that i picture you know like i don't know a volkswagen bus you know just hitting the road <laughs> with like no need to turn back is that how that goes for you is that what you picture too <laughs> yeah, I would probably I would probably plot different places we wanted to visit and make plans with all the different herbalists and kind of just base it around that. There, I'm sure there'd be some freestyle involved, but uh, yeah, yeah. I love that plan. I think that's a fantastic one. It's <laughs> funny before Brandon and I kind of put our roots down where we are, and and we have a very 
well, our, our climate's the same, you know, most people that snowbird, they leave from, I don't know, anywhere from, you know, beginning of October, coming back in April, May, similar, similar story. But I, and it's funny too, it, before, before settling down, we had done some traveling and before the pandemic. So I'm, I'm super grateful we got the chance to do all that because it would obviously look so different now, but, um, but on that same token, it took leaving for me to realize how much I actually appreciate the winter. But at the same time, I love being on the road and being free to have home be where you park it. And I think the things that you'd be doing along the way would be such a fun way to keep the momentum of Herb Rally still going, but still maybe have some more freedom of exploration and, and kind of tie, tying into that too. I think a lot of us are, uh, I don't know, what kind of climate are you right now at this time of year? We're, we're talking mid-Feb. How, how cold does it get there? Uh, today, it's probably like 40 degrees. Um, okay. Being in the 20s is pretty rare, but it happens. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it's, it snowed a month or so ago. Um, but we don't get much. What's that? Would that be unusual, the snow? Uh, it, it's been more frequent. It's been about every year now for the past several years, uh, some snow. But yeah, it, it usually just does it once and then it's gone the next week. Oh, right on. Yeah. Okay. But it, so it rains a lot. The rumors are true. Well. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Sounds like our West Coast here too. <laughs> Very yeah. much the same. As far as your your home and your roots get set where where you are right now, what does a typical day in the life look like for you? Um, I wake up uh, probably around eight ish, and I've been going to the gym again. It's felt really oh. really good. Amazing. Um, it's uh, I was really into it in my you know early twenties and stuff like that, and. Um, I was asking Amanda, I was like, why, why did I stop going to the gym? And it, and it's, you know, I think it's just cause our lives get so busy, you know? Uh, yeah. so I just do that first thing in the morning and I just, and I I've come to like really enjoy it. Um, so I usually am there for an hour or so. And, um, then I just come home and, uh, probably make some to eat. And then I just start working on herb rally and that's about five days a week. We try to keep our weekends still a thing. Um, okay. You know, sometimes we have to do work on the weekends, but uh, mostly that's that's it. I just I treat it like a nine to five. Um, and do yeah. you find that works better for you when you have a structure? I constantly go back and forth between you know it's fun to, and especially in this way where in in most ways you're 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 your own boss, obviously having to accommodate other people's schedules and things like that, of course. But um, do you find the rigidity of a structure, you know, like getting set in that routine helps you feel free flowing in other areas or do you work better where it's just, you pick up a little bit here and then you can put that down and then pick up this and, you know, put that down. I'm, I'm big into structure and time blocking and stuff like that. And definitely like project management, management software. Like I use something called Rike. It's just like Monday or, um, right. Trillo or whatever, those types of things. Like oh, I'm right. big on that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I'm a, I'm a pretty organized person and I don't think I'd be able to function if I wasn't. So. Well, and you probably have always been that way, I guess too, if the events, cause events is all planning, organizing. I imagine that would be a, a, a skill that you've had coming into it. Eh? Yeah. Do you remember those binders uh, in school, but they were like, I had a binder once that like zipped up on the outside. You... Yes, I had one of those. Okay. <laughs> so my binder, uh, this was like in sixth grade. It had Shaquille O'Neal, Shaquille O'Neal on it. And it was like a zipper <laughs> binder. And I used to be so unorganized. I would just throw everything in there. And since it was a zipper, it would just all stay in there. <laughs> and I remember, I remember going to my dad and I said, I really want to be organized. And he's like, it's a skill, you know? It really so, is. so I, I really started working on it. And yeah, by the time I was the events person for Mountain Reserves, I was pretty adept at organization. Yeah, it's funny. I find the skills that we were lacking, if we notice them young enough, they end up being our, or, you know, the lack turns into the skill later on in life because you, <laughs> you've spent so much time honing in on that, you know. Yeah. I definitely agree with you there. And my binder, you know, if the donuts didn't fit on the holes when the paper ripped out, they were just all over. So the, the binder, you know, that zipped around, it just saved the day. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm with you there. That was a, a taste of nostalgia for a minute. Thinking back totally. to that, what was your what was your childhood like? Were, were herbs part of your plant path? Like, were they part of your path when you were young at all, or was it was it definitely like I know you mentioned later on in life, but did it were there like little bits of that infused in your life growing up? Or you know, I don't really remember other than Isaac, my brother, a couple years ago said 
Mason, I remember when you were a child, you used to talk to the plants and I do not remember that at all. <laughs> um, I always liked going on hikes and being in, you know, being in the woods and going camping and whatnot, but I don't vividly remember, uh, like I used to do a lot of yard work as a kid. And um, other than that, no, I, I wasn't, I was a pretty standard non-planty kid I would I would think I was really into basketball and sports and stuff like that but yeah oh right on yeah. I know I always wonder because I, I often meet people and they like you know they had maybe if it wasn't their direct you know their parents it would be their grandparents that kind of brought them into this world a little bit or you know maybe it just became the wallpaper in their lives and they they didn't pay much notice to it just because it was always there and I'm, I'm similar to you in the respect of it. It wasn't part of my growing up. I, I came to it on my own means. And, um, and it, it is interesting. Like I, I find because of that, and maybe you can resonate with this too. I find I don't take any information for granted because it's, you know, hearing it is like hearing it for the first time. It's not something that I, I, you know, hear my grandmother or my mom, you know, repeats or anything like that. It's just, I'm, I'm a sponge to, all this information and and I just want to soak up as much as I can because I feel like you know I'm, I'm making up for some some years that I didn't get maybe that exposure to to that sort of life and so I think it's cool to hear how people came to it and and whether it was it was always there whether it was something that you've explored obviously down the road yourself and and so I'm curious too because you know I spend I spend a lot of time on the computer as well having to to do the things and uh, do you find like obviously with that screen time do you find you have to balance it with as much time outdoors or, or how do you navigate that I know I think we both resonate on on loving hikes and walks and especially I also have a puppy so I can <laughs> I can resonate with that I'm excited for for you to get one um, to be able to to take him or her on walks with you but how do you how do you find that balance or or do you or is that something that you're you're working towards as well this is probably an ironic answer and I'm just now realizing this. I really want an app that is able to like, <laughs> <laughs> like measure is I want this app that is able to measure how much time I spend in nature. And then like every year, try to increase that number. I've thought about this for a while. Cause, cause I'm such like a, like a, I set these goals uh, yeah. and I, I measure my workouts. I measure um, I measure my money I, or like, you know, my finances or whatever I should say. Um, I was like, oh, I really want to measure, you know, my time in the woods or the nature. Um, kind of yeah, like our phones it, do the screen time right now. You know, they they shut you off if you've had too much. Or I think I don't have that set, but I think that's what happens. <laughs> it seems, uh, yeah, it seems so bizarre that the life that I lead is driven around promoting, you know, being in nature, essentially, like nature education. And then I'm spending so much time behind a computer. And it was the same thing at Mountain Reserves. I'm promoting this lifestyle. And here I am 40 hours a week behind a computer, a computer monitor. But um, um, no, it is important to me. And uh, um, I'm all about planning, planting all sorts of my favorite plants in my yard. We were blessed with a lot of natural wilderness around here. And it does, it does feel like now that it's winter, I'm like, oh, I don't go in the woods that often. I'm like, Oh, right. I do it less in the winter time. It's all, it's all good. Um, yeah. I, I do all right. I do go on lots of walks. I, I, I measure that too. I try to get 20,000 steps a day, which seems absurd. Uh, and I don't hit it every day. I probably three days a week I'll hit that, but, um, uh, yeah, walking is big for me and, um, yeah, we just do the best we can. And, uh, I will know when it's time to go back out in, into nature because, you know, I'm getting a little too agitated or, or, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I think I hit that same point. And I yeah. feel like the, the wilderness is calling and do you have access to, you know, a bunch of trails and stuff where you are? Or? Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. And you mentioned, uh, one of the, um, I took two apprenticeships, two herbal apprenticeships. Uh, one of them was the Columbine school of botanical studies. It's in Eugene, Oregon, my hometown. And, uh, that was the, um, that was the moment where I really began to understand a herbalism, but, but B just like how to walk through the woods and like, recognize these plants and understand them as you know beings essentially um and uh that was totally revolutionary for me and uh so i will go back to very similar wilderness areas that we went to in class and i love it um oh, yeah 
Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I think anytime being, uh, you know, anytime that you can spend outdoors in, in immersed in the forest is just amazing. You know, vitamin N, I call it. I, I think we all need more of it in our life. And uh, it's true. I find, I find that too, obviously just with the winter, the accessibility of trails and that it, it changes the game a little bit, but then again, that's seasonal living, right? Like we, you know, we're, we're hibernating a little bit more and, you know, not truly, but, you know, so it, it just speaks to the climate and the time of year we're in, but I think it, it really is so important. And uh, as far as your house goes, it sounds like you're pretty surrounded by, by woods as well, or what, what does that look like? I'm in a very standard neighborhood in Springfield. Um, but yeah, we, we've got a, a quarter acre lot, like yard oh, or yeah, fifth acre, something like that. But we, there's, there's a decent amount of space and we've been doing a lot of more, a lot more yard work recently. And, um, but yeah, just, you know, 30 to 60 minutes down the road, we'll be immersed in old growth. So. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's something we don't actually have up in. So we're actually in a peninsula. Um, but I think it was sometime in the the eighties, a huge fire totally wiped out most of the peninsula we're on. So there's no old growth forests anymore. There's, you know, you'll be in a forest and you might see one or two, um, you know, mother trees, but they're few and far between. So, you know, anytime I get to experience old growth forests again, I just forget how, I don't know, majestic. It, it almost takes your breath away. You know, I don't know if you feel that, but every time I, I walk in, as soon as I can't see, you know, the, the parking lot or the, the end of the trail, the opening of the trail, and you're just in it, yeah. nothing beats it. It's my favorite thing in the world. I'm, I I'm sure you. you can resonate with that. It's just such a, I guess that's why we're here, right? We love, we love those li- lifestyles. And it, it is true. Finding the balance isn't always easy, but it, because it's, it's what we're, you know, the bread and butter of our day, it makes it easier to focus on that and, and take time away to, to explore and immerse and, and to be outside. But I kind of feel like I'm in some ways like paying my dues right now to later on kind of reap yeah. more of the rewards of the natural lifestyle or, you know, um, although there is, what's that, adage where it's like you know someone works to become a billionaire so they could buy a yacht so they could learn to fish or something like that but it's like you could just go fish uh, right (laughs) yeah skip the the intro and just (laughs) go right i don't know i i i feel like it's my calling um and uh um yeah i i feel like i have to do this work and i i feel like um um, Paul Bergner, when I was up there in Portland, I know he, this isn't his quote, but he said it. I can't remember who it's attributed to, but he goes, uh, when you're on your path, the universe will conspire to help you. Um, and I really do feel like I'm on my path. So although it does seem kind of ironic that I'm spending all this time behind the computer promoting a natural lifestyle, um, I do feel like this is the work I'm supposed to be doing. And I do feel like later on, I will get to spend more time in the woods. <laughs> Absolutely. I could totally see how that would pan out. Absolutely. And it's so true, right? I think, I think that that is such a true thing. I'm actually reading a book right now and it speaks to something along the very similar notion of, you know, when we want something bad enough, everything, you, you know, the universe will conspire to make it so, or there, I think I know the saying that you're, there's probably many of them, but um, yeah, totally. it's so true. I think we just have to figure out what it is that we want and what and be clear with that goal. And then, you know, everything will work in its power to, to help us get there as long as we want it bad enough. But uh, similar to what you were saying before, sometimes the first step is the hardest step. Most of the time, I think, <laughs> I think the first step is, but it's, it's just getting past that first step. You know, I, uh, and I think we had talked about this a little bit last time, uh, an, a, a book I'd read uh, some time ago and uh, it was by uh, Diane Beresford Kroger and, and it was when she was young and there was this huge field that they had to, had to harvest and it was just two people doing it. And when they had it in their head that they were going to do it, they did, even though it seemed insurmountable, but it was just the art of actually going ahead and doing it and taking that first step. And I think that's always the hardest, but there's a quote that always comes back to me and it's uh, your first is your worst at best. It's a test. And I'm like, ah, you know what? It's just, you know, it's never going to be great. Similar to what you had said, you know, with your launch of the pod and, you know, it's, you know, you just got to do it and it, it'll, it'll come together and it'll form a shape that it will in, in natural due time, but you just, you gotta, you gotta start somewhere. Right. And yeah, man, I there's think- so, so many examples looking back of where that's totally true for me. Right? So yeah. And it's hard to see it sometimes when you're in it, but when you look back, you're like, ah, yes, <laughs> I see how this happened now. <laughs> yeah. 
It's so true. It's so, so true. And uh, well, hey, do you have any words of inspiration? Because I mean, hey, I don't know what it took you to have the gumption to take that very first step. But for anyone listening that might be there, do you have any any words of wisdom you can share or something that might have come to your mind when you were back in in the midst of <laughs> the through it or idea stage? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be cliche again, but you, you really <laughs> just have to jump in and do it uh, no matter how much fear is going through your system. I mean, all of the best things in my life have been those things where it's my entire heart and soul is telling me that I have to do this. And then when I don't do it for extended periods of time, I feel sad and unfulfilled. And then it's like jumping off the ledge. Um, oh, um, man, there's such a good, do you, do you remember Shel Silverstein? Oh, yeah. what a quote. He's, a, he's like a child, uh, children's poet, uh, but he's got a great thing about just diving off the diving board. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send you a link to that later. But, yeah, please uh, do. I, uh, I'd love it, to hear. I always think about it when, when I have to make these decisions and um, uh, like the whole Amanda thing, it was three years of essential <laughs> torture because I had this such strong feelings <laughs> Uh, and then finally one day I'm like, I like you. And it was like the best thing ever, you know? Yeah. So I just really think you, you if, whether you're feeling it, um, and the fear is just overtaking you, I would just say work towards the steps of actually doing it. Um, this interview is actually a really good example because, um, I've hosted a pod. Well, I've had a podcast for three plus years with, you know, 300, actually more than like four years with 300 some episodes, and I've never been interviewed on a podcast before. Um, and so like a month or so ago, I was interviewed on my first one and I was terrified. I have no idea why. Um, and, uh, and this one was way easier. So. <laughs> oh, right on. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's one of those things where the, the preamble to getting there is way worse than the thing itself. Almost, you know, a Good lot of times, put it. you know, but I think you illustrated so perfectly in that if it seems harder to not do it, or if it seems, yeah, if it seems harder to not do the thing, you're more than likely supposed to do the thing, you know, that's kind of fulfilling your purpose, but it, it totally is the best things in life always come when you, when you jump with both feet, you know, and, and don't leave a little, a little toe in the, the comfortable pool behind <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> yeah. but I think that that sums it up perfectly. And it's funny, even being a, a huge fan of the podcast, when you said that to me, when we were on the, uh, when we were on a chat previous to sitting down today, you had said, you know, I'd never been uh, interviewed or I had never done the interviewing or I guess be the interviewee. And I was like, wow, after years I, of listening, I had never put that together. I'm like, this is <laughs> her rally has been here for so long and I've never clued into wait, Hey, Mason hasn't been on one before. Um, so I think you probably, you know, most people probably are in the same boat that didn't even clue into that, but you're, you're, you know, it's just such a great place. You, you hold space for so many amazing people to, to share their voice and, and experience and education, all that stuff. So I think that's a great place to wrap up and just Thank gives you. people the inspiration to, to do, you know, whatever it is that's irking them and, and whatever it is that's calling for them, even if it means getting a little uncomfortable and, and even just taking a first step, it's not going to be perfect as we've both talked about so much today. It's not gonna be perfect. You just got to do it. Um, so with that, uh, thank you so much, Mason, for, for sitting down with me today. It's been a, a real treat. I hope we can do this again since now we've obviously gone all over <laughs> your, your, the, the past and the history and what got you here. So next time we can explore more of your offerings in further detail and just dive into all the new and upcoming stuff that obviously is, is in the works. Um, but I so appreciate your time today and sitting down with you. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks, Chelsea. I really appreciate being here. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely down for a round two. Amazing. So for everyone looking to check out Mason and Herb Rally, it is herbrally.com. And I will link to all the, all the sites and uh, handles and stuff in the show notes. So you can just go on and check that out there. Uh, but uh, again, until next week, thank you so much, Mason and signing off. Thanks.